Great. Uh, before we delve into your recent IBM Center report of the cost of budget uncertainty, analyzing the impacts of late appropriations, I'd like to provide some set, uh, context and explain certain realities that beset our period. First things first, would you elaborate on what is meant today by the coming fiscal cliff, and what are the conditions that precipitated this situation? Well, it's a good question, and of course it's a question that lots of people are asking right now in Washington. Uh, the fiscal cliff results from many factors, uh, and the thing that they all have in common is that they're all self-inflicted. Uh, there are really two big components of the fiscal cliff. Uh, first, the Bush tax cuts that were passed in 2001 and then 2003 uh, were sunset in order to make them more uh, affordable. But what that means is that while they were kind of phased in a little at a time, they all go away at once. And when a tax cut goes away, it means people are experiencing a big tax increase. So people are right now slated to experience a big tax increase as of the beginning of January. Uh, the second is that when the so-called super committee uh, in 2011 failed to reach agreement on a set of spending cuts and tax increases to cut $1.2 trillion from the budget deficit, uh, there was a process put in place called sequestration, which is uh, a set of automatic spending cuts that are also scheduled to take effect at the same time. So if you add those two things together, mm -hmm. plus a number of other sort of little things or smaller things, there's a total of about $5 trillion worth of tax increases and spending cuts over 10 years that, that's scheduled to go into effect. And that's what people describe as, as the fiscal cliff. Now, as I say, mm -hmm. the fiscal cliff, if it is a cliff, and I sort of prefer to think of it as a slope more mm -hmm. than a cliff because it's not like a government shutdown or even a debt ceiling uh, failure where kind of really bad things happen all at once. Uh, it's more that over a long period of time, you're going to have you know less spending and you're going to have higher taxes. But the cliff is really the existence of the cliff is a failure of our politics. That is, it's the failure of our ability to kind of come together and and put together a, a, a budget that is really sort of consistent with what a budget ought to be, which is kind of trying to match up spending and revenues. Uh, and uh, and so we built it, you know, kind of block by block or stone by stone. Uh, the problem is is not really a disagreement, I think, about whether the deficit needs to be cut, which it does need to be cut. I think the basic problem is that if you just let the fiscal cliff kick in, then it's going to happen in a very sort of unreflected way. And so what people are looking for now is not trying to necessarily avoid having the deficit cut, but do it in a more sort of responsible and considered way. And that, of course, is the difficulty because the reason we have this to begin with is because people haven't been able to agree on, uh, you know, one party says it doesn't want to raise taxes, another party says it doesn't want to touch entitlements. So the question is, given this looming uh, deadline, really, the mm -hmm. fiscal cliff deadline, are they going to be able to get together and do something now?